let's go over some iffy plant collecting territory. I won't call it a scam. Some of them are scam. So here we have a highly coveted Monstera Albo. These suckers can get super expensive. You can find these listed on the internet as fully grown plants like this, as seeds, cuttings, and wet sticks. Do not do seeds. There is no way to verify the variegation in a seed. They don't exist. If you're going to do wet sticks, this is what you want. A wet stick has a node, which is ooh, that right there. I don't do wet sticks, but a lot of people do them. This is probably the most ideal cutting. You have two leaves as well as a node from an aerial root. Plus the variegation is easily distributed. And I know this leaf looks so, so pretty, but please trust me, do not do it. This has no chlorophyll. It'll die. Here are the 10 most commonly asked questions I get about Monstera's answered. These vining plants that love to climb are generally sought after for their fenestrated leaves. They like bright and direct light, but not direct, too direct, it will burn. Not bright enough, you won't get the fenestration. You'll wanna water when the first half of the pot is dry. So depending on the size of your plant, that could be every 10 to 14 to 18 days. Like most tropical plants, they love their humidity and you'll wanna fertilize them only during their growth season about once a month. Baby leaves will tend to come in without any slits and then as they grow bigger and more towards the light, they will start to develop their splits. They can handle a good trim, so don't be shy about removing any discolored or distorted leaf. You don't want the plant's energy going towards maintaining that and it can actually encourage new growth. Like see, I cut this here and now look at this. They prefer to be a little bit more snug in the pot and too big of a pot can actually cause issues. You'll wanna wipe down your leaves at least once a month with a damp cloth so dust doesn't collect and block light absorption. Oops, I'm out of time folks, I'll have to do another video. Friends, we're finally doing it. Here is your full care guide on Monstera Deliciosa. These guys appreciate bright and direct light, so in an east or west or near a south window would be perfect. Yes, a grow light is fine. A lot of you guys are overwatering. I let the dirt dry out pretty much completely before watering again. If you're an overwater, try planting it in terracotta. For my bigger pots for aeration, I like to poke some holes in the dirt before watering. Those roots need oxygen. Make sure you dust those leaves to keep them shiny and prevent pests. And missing these guys, really unnecessary. These guys are incredibly easy to propagate. Just cut below a node and stick it in the water and yield roots in no time. But Nicole, I want holes. Give her some support. No, it does not have to be a moss pole. Good luck. Okay, so a lot of you guys really seem to enjoy my Monstera tip video where I told you to submerge your aerial roots in water. But I did get a lot of questions asking how long you should leave them in water and when you should take them out, etc. So I just wanted to show you uh, this aerial root that's been sitting in water for quite some time now so when the root starts to look like this and grow baby roots of its own i tend to take them out of the water at that point and then what you can do is just pop that right into the soil and you can cover it if you want to i just tend to leave mine um, open to air because they will eventually bury themselves and then you can just find a new aerial root and repeat the same process thanks for watching customer asked me to repot and stake their Monstera Deliciosa with this massive root system. So first thing I do is measure it out. I want to get it a couple feet above the total height of the Monstera. I mark it just below the pot and cut my PVC pipe to length. Get your cocoa fiber and cut it out and uh, tie some string. I used to use a twine for this one. And then you're just going to start wrapping it around. You want to uh, make a nice good fit all the way to the top. Um, making sure I just wind it around every couple of inches again because I like to keep it pretty tight. Get to the top and then I actually go back down again because I want to cover all those gaps uh, where the two pieces of fiber meet and just tie it together. Next we're going to get on to the repotting. So I actually had to cut this one out. I just use a sh sharp razor blade and try not to damage any of the roots. Rip it apart where you can. I wanted to save as many of this massive root system as we could because it's so healthy. Look at those nice big roots. Very healthy monstera right here, which is good to see. Loosen up the root ball. You're going to lose a few roots here, but it's worth it in the end. Uh, it's going to help the, the plant grow into the new soil. I like to kind of rake out some of them along the sides as well to really loosen up the root ball. Here I just use one part uh, regular potting mix with uh, one part perlite. I put some cocoa fiber in the bottom to block the drainage holes as well. Um, fill up your pot with a little bit of soil there at the bottom, and then we're going to place the monstera in there. I like to leave about an inch at the top so that water can uh, pool up when you're watering. Then you're just going to backfill. Make sure that you're hitting the sides so that all of the soil can get down into the bottoms, and of course, firm it in as you go as well. You don't want any gaps when you're repotting. And next, we're going to do the tying up, and this part is really up to you. You kind of have to 
find the shape that you want. Um, just tie up bits by bits. Um, don't worry too much right now about uh, training the actual plant to the pole. That's going to come later. For now, we're just going to tie up the main branches to get it to be more ruly. Um, and over time is when we will shape it. It's a good time to prune as well, and that's the finished product. Here is my Monstera, okay? It's like five foot tall. On Monday, I did something. I took my moss balls and I put my Monstera's air roots in the water. That's how they naturally grow in the wild, if you didn't know. But they obviously love it. In five days, one new leaf, two, three, four, five, six. Six new leaves by putting the air roots in water. Do it. You no longer need no more convincing. Just put them in water. Time to water my Monstera Deliciosa. To tall for this stand now, switching to a shorter one. I used a gallons every time I water, with fertilizer added. to get creative with the draining solutions. Y'all know what it is. Monster Deliciosa repotting. My Monster was slightly rebound in her nursery pot, so we had to give her a new home. I loosened her root ball to find that she had a little bit of root rot. One thing we don't do is hold on to extra baggage that keeps us stagnant. <laughs> Use sterilized shears to clip off the dead roots and treated it with the mixture consisting of two parts water and one part 3% hydrogen peroxide to deep clean her roots and promote healthier growth. Grab the two inches bigger pre soaked terracotta pot, an eco friendly, pea free homemade mix consisting of cocoa core, perlite worm castings, and horticultural charcoal. Everything is linked. My Amazon shop in my bio, patted her in lightly, watered her into the water drip from the bottom hole, sprayed and cleaned her foliage with neem oil mixture. Now my girl is refreshed, zero stress, and it is in her growth bag this season. Follow for more plant tips. If you're just using potting soil, you might be overwatering your plant. You can't grow a great monstera without great soil. Here's what you need orchid bark, perlite, earthworm castings, horticultural charcoal, and a little bit of potting soil. Better plant, better soil and more fenestrations. Check out Kill This Plant for more. Where's Dylan? I can't even see him. Three different nodes. We got one over here, but we're gonna keep that one intact. And we're gonna get this guy since he's growing sideways. Right there, yeah. Mm. Three, two, one. All right, here's my number one tip for keeping your Monstera looking this full and happy. Are you ready? I actually don't keep it like this. My Monstera only looks like this when I'm taking photos or if I have guests over. The rest of the time, it looks like this. Yep, <laughs> it's not as attractive, but each leaf on a Monstera, it's basically like a satellite dish, so they need to face um, their light source. A lot of people turn their monsteros a lot, kind of like you would with this palea down here to keep them even, and that's just not the kind of plant it is, so it's never gonna look good. That's actually why some of my older leaves look like this, is from me constantly turning them before I knew. My monstera is also on a trellis. He's attached with these like um, little twist ties. It's like a 36 inch trellis. And yeah, he's gendered, he doesn't care. His name is Monty, he's fabulous. This is Spot. All right, guys, it's time to answer some questions. So this is what we normally see every day because she's flipped around. She's my height. I'm six foot. She's, this is literally six feet right here. Um, and this is what you guys saw in the other video, the front. Beautiful. I actually don't clean them. <laughs> Super irresponsible these. Are a little less shiny, but these are new. That's why they're so shiny. That one's new. That one's new. They look like they've been neem oiled, but they haven't. I also have a grow light. Uh, it's on, I think, like 
four to five hours a day? I water it every five days. Usually every five days, because this sucker can drink. Uh, she's also really heavy. <laughs> I don't know exactly how much this is, but I give her one and a half of these. Huge. I don't have a humidifier up here, so I do mist it quite often. I'd say multiple times a day, if not at least once a day. I don't cut the aerial roots off. They're still there. I used basic potting mix when I repotted her a few months ago, and this is what she looked like when she was little, about 10 months ago. So she's like quadrupled in size. 